So this question is actually probably one of the hardest ones I've made so far. And the reason for that is because, one, you have to understand what I'm getting at in this vignette with the methadone program which I'm implying that the patient has a history of IV drug use, heroin. That's the only reason you'd be on methadone to begin with, is to help prevent heroin relapse. Okay, so methadone is uh, a long-acting opioid receptor agonist. Okay, so patients who go off heroin, uh, they're obviously going to undergo withdrawal symptoms, uh, such as piloerection, yawning, rhinorrhea, just severe discomfort, and they're going to want to relapse back onto heroin. So methadone just agonize those opioid receptors and prevent the relapse. So the implication is this, this patient's been an IV drug user. Uh, and as you know, IV drug use associated with HIV, hepatitis C, we connect that with the image here. This is Kaposi sarcoma, okay? It's like, oh, wow, Kaposi sarcoma. Okay, well, Kaposi sarcoma, uh, you classically see it in HIV patients. You can sometimes see it in patients who are not immunocompromised, very rare, uh, but uh, classically HIV. And then you say, okay, well, isn't that caused by human herpes virus 8, HHV8, uh, aka Kaposi sarcoma like virus? So when we ask about the pharmacotherapy, like, you know, we could be talking about antivirals in theory slash antivirals as in highly active antiretroviral therapy, heart therapy for the HIV AIDS. And we don't see that as, uh, we don't see those antivirals as answers here. So we have to address some sort of other connection. Now, uh, for because this is Kaposi sarcoma, as I just mentioned, looking at the answers, uh, the only one that makes sense is going to be doxorubicin, which is an antineoplastic. Now, does the USMLE expect you to specifically know that doxorubicin is like the first line uh, antineoplastic for Kaposi sarcoma? Absolutely not. Uh, they have no interest. So don't, it's, it's one of those forest for the trees types of situations. You don't need to memorize OMG, doxorubicin is what we use for Kaposi sarcoma. I happened to check that in the literature when I made this question. It's more just the NBME for step one. Uh, I write my questions based on what I've seen on NBME assessment. They ask a very similar question, and then the answer is going to be anti-neoplastic. So you'd have like antibacterial, antifungal as examples, and then anti-neoplastic, which is the answer here. So we we need an anti-neoplastic agent so, such as doxorubicin. Okay, so uh, that's also known as adriamycin. Uh, it's an alkylating agent slash intercalator, can also generate free radicals. Um, but doxorubicin, uh, that's our antineoplastic here. It can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, so that's high yield for USMLE. Dilated cardiomyopathy, obviously presenting with an uh, enlarged cardiac silhouette, uh, lateralized apex beat, it can be S3 heart sound, uh, pulmonary edema, etc. Okay, so... Doxorubicin, we look at some of the other answers, ciprofloxacin, that's just fluoroquinolone antibi antibiotic. Um, that's just not going to have a role in Kaposi sarcoma. Ciprofloxacin is classic for uh, severe GU, genitourinary infections, such as pyelonephritis or prostatitis. Classic ciprofloxacin use. Uh, ciprofloxacin is also, it can be used for diverticulitis, where you give metronidazole, which will knock out anaerobes. Uh, plus um, a fluoroquinolone, okay? So metronidazole plus fluoroquinolone, that's classic for diverticulitis. You don't need to know that combination for step, don't worry. I'm just telling you, if you're curious, like, well, just so we can remember, like to have a, have a little bit of context, right? You say like, what are some associations? You can just say, well, ciprofloxin's classic for pyelonephritis, classic for prostatitis, and it can be used for diverticulitis uh, with metronidazole. Um, and don't forget that fluoroquinolones, which inhibit DNA gyrase, topoisomerase, bacteria, prokaryotic slash bacterial topoisomerase 2, um, can cause tendinopathy. Okay, so Achilles tendonitis. Gentamicin, aminoglycoside antibiotic, inhibits the 30S ribosomal subunit, uh, prevents formation of the initiation complex, causes misreading of the mRNA. Gentamicin is a really, really nasty antibiotic. 
uh, really bad side effects. It can cause nephrotoxicity, acute tubular necrosis, uh, as well as ototoxicity. Okay, so neurosensory hearing loss it can also cause vertigo. The room can be spinning. It need not be neurosensory hearing loss. It can just be the room is spinning. Gentamicin, aminoglycosides, hit gram negatives. Okay, so uh, classically um, used in empiric therapy for endocarditis, where you get vancomycin plus gentamicin. That combination is really high yield. Ampicillin, gentamicin, also a combination used for various things. Uh, so we can move forward here. Permethrin is our classic uh, agent used to treat scabies. Okay, so this is actually, permethrin is actually very high yield for U.S. Amelia across the steps. They're going to show you a picture of a dude's hands, and they're going to tell you that um, it's an itchy rash. He was in a homeless shelter for a few months, and that uh, topical antifungals didn't work. And you're going to need, need to know permethrin is the treatment for scabies. That's a classic description of scabies. Uh, and then prednisone is just a steroid, okay? That's actually probably... I'm just guessing because I just wrote this fucking question, but I'm guessing that some students would erroneously choose steroids here. It doesn't sound like a terrible answer, um, but if you're wondering how to treat Kaposi sarcoma, but we want to choose the anti-neoplastic. And once again, on the NBME, uh, they're going to give you this scenario. And then in addition to heart therapy, highly active antiretroviral therapy for the HIV AIDS, you're going to give an anti-neoplastic therapy for the Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, I think a final point, this audio is getting long enough. The uh, final point is that you can get a Kaposi sarcoma like presentation caused by Barnella hensile. It's referred to as bacillary angiomatosis or bacillary angiomatosis. So let's say you get a Barnella hensile causes cat scratch disease, right? But you can also get bacillary angiomatosis that looks like Kaposi sarcoma. So let's say you get a, a presentation like this and you're like, oh, that's like it's HIV. And it's, it looks like Kaposi sarcoma, let's say on like the arm. And then you look at the answers and they're all bacteria. And you're forced to, to, to choose a bacterium. And you're like, what the fuck? You're like, this looks like Kaposi sarcoma. Though. But you see Barnell Hensley, you're like, oh, this is like, that's right. This is bacillary or bacillary angiomatosis. Okay. So that's your high yield factoid. It's just a bacillary angiomatosis caused by Barnell Hensley uh, can cause a Kaposi sarcoma like presentation. That's it.